Hello everyone, this is uh, Jonathan and today we're working on some ACT practice problems. Uh, and these questions are in math, about the middle of the exam, so they're of intermediate difficulty. Uh, let's look at these. A survey in a study skills class asked that 20 students enrolled in the class, how many hours rounded to the nearest hour they spent studying on the previous evening? Uh, the 20 responses are summarized by the histogram below. Uh, so right off the bat we know we have a total of 20 students. Um, that's going to be important in uh, the questions that follow. Um, now let's see what they ask. Number 33. What fraction of the students responded that they had spent less than three hours studying? Now an important thing here is um, less than three. Um, so that means they spent uh, zero, one, or two hours studying, but not three. Um, so if we count the total number of students who studied for those hours and divide by all of the students in the class, 20, we should get that fraction. Um, so let's do that. At zero, we have two students uh, studying. At one, we have five. And at six, we, at two hours, we have six. So that's gonna be 13. And then the total number of students we have is 20. So 13 over 20 will be our fraction, and the answer is D. Um, let's move on to the next one, um, number 34. The teacher decides to show the data in a circle graph, a pie chart. Uh, what should be the measure of the central anger, angle of the sector for three hours? All right, so let's draw a rough rough pie chart of uh, what we're looking at here. Um, so students studying zero hours, that's gonna be a small section. Um, studying one hours, it's pretty big. Two is all the biggest, that should be like that. Um, three is also fairly big, that's good. And then four and five are kind of what's left. Uh, this is what we're looking like so far. And what we're trying to find is the central angle of the three hour segment. We'll call that X. Um, and let's see first the students who study three hours, what fraction of the total students they are. Um, so we know that there are four of them who study three hours. So four students who study three hours. And we put that over 20, the total number of students. Uh, and we can reduce this right, to 1 over 5. Just divide by 4 on top and bottom. Uh, and now what we need to do is we need to find the um, degrees that this uh, corresponds to. Um, and so how many degrees are there in a circle? 360 around the circle there. And so we need to find the fraction here. So we'll call that x. x out of 360 equals 1 over 5. And we just need to compute this cross multiply 5x equals 360 and then we divide by 5 on both sides right x equals we can do uh, 360 divided by 5 can you all see that oh that's good 72 perfect x equals 72 and that is one of our answer choices j good now let's look at the last one on this page, 35. To the nearest tenth of an hour, uh, one decimal place, what is the average number of hours for the 20 survey responses? Um, so for the average number of hours for everybody, what we should do is total hours studied by all of the students over total number of students. So now when we're calculating the total hours studied, that's going to be a little difficult but not too tricky. Um, if you have a student uh, who studied zero hours, they're not going to add anything to the total, right? Um, if you have a student that studied for one hour, um, and we have five students that studied for one hour, they add five hours to the total number, right? And uh, 
Each one of these students in this bar studied for two hours. There's six of them, so six times two. This group adds 12 hours to the total studied, total hours studied. Let's see, this group studied for three hours. There's four of them. Four times three is also 12, so they added 12 hours of study time. Um, four students added, or two students, I've had added four hours. Uh, so they add eight hours total to um, the hours studied. And then one student studied a whole five hours. So he or she adds five hours to the total number of hours studied. Um, and so when we add all that up, let's see, 5 plus 12 is um, 17, plus 12 is 29, plus 8 is um, 37, plus 5 is 42. So we get 42 over, and then total number of students is still 20. Um, let's see, we can reduce that a little bit, 21 over 10. And that's a little bit easier to calculate. 21 divided by 10 is just 2.1 with the decimal. Um, now let's see, 2.1, is that an answer? Yes, it is, B. And B would be our answer. Um, if you want to see the official uh, sum of all of this, you would write something like, something like this. Um, just to show you, we have two students studying zero hours plus five students studying one hour, plus six students studying two hours, plus four students studying three hours, plus two students studying four hours, plus one student studying five hours. Um, and we then get the five plus 12 plus 12 plus eight, plus five that we already um, computed. So there's how you do that one. Um, next, and now we're done with that histogram, uh, and we'll move on. Next thing we do, this one shouldn't be too bad. Uh, the Pentagon has five diagonals as illustrated below. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, just like you're drawing a star. How many diagonals does the octagon below have? Um, now, solution manuals will tell you that there's like a fancy math way to do this, but honestly, I look at the answer choices and see that, you know, there's around, their maximum there's 40 and minimum there's eight diagonals. So I might as well just draw them. It's gonna take about the same time as any fancy um, math way to do it. And then I'm not wasting space in my brain to memorize weird tricks. Uh, so let's do that. Let's start here. Let's make these points very visible. Um, and now the important thing is this is not considered a diagonal. So from here to here is not going to be a diagonal. You start there. One, two, three, four, five. We're at five. And then we start here and continue. 6, 7, 8, 9, oh, 10, right, now we're at 10, and then let's go here, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, now the important thing here is that I didn't redraw this diagonal, okay, um, you don't want to double count, and that's where most people get in trouble on these ones. So we've done this one, we've done this one, we've done this one. Let's move on. Um, now see, we've already drawn this diagonal. We've already drawn that diagonal. So we continue on. 15, 16, 17. Now we're at 17. And we've done that one. Then we move on. Now if you can see, we've already drawn that diagonal, that one, and that one, right? All the checked ones have already reached this point. So we only need to look at the unchecked ones. And we're at 17, so we go 18, 19. Now we're at 19, and we've done that one. If we look at this one, we've already gone here, 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 here. The only one left to check is there. We haven't drawn that one yet, so let's get that one. Perfect. 
Um, we've done that one, and now we're at 20. And let's see, we've done that one. Now let's see if we need to draw any more here. Um, we've done that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. They're all checked off. Um, so we're good there. None added, we're still at 20. And here the same thing applies. We've already drawn that, 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 and that. And so now we've looked at all of the vertices and done all the diagonals. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, and we've reached 20. So there we go. That's the answer for that one. Alrighty, um, that is it for this video. Come back for more ACT math practice. Thanks for watching.